A very good evening, everyone. Very welcome to the session. The prime agenda for this webinar would be to introduce the one year MBA in digital enterprise management program, as well as address any queries that you have for us regarding the same. I'm Mahima Makija, a student of the current cohort of digital enterprise management program here at IIM Udaipur. Before joining the DEM program, I was working as a pre-sales consultant for Oracle Cloud and wanted to pursue an MBA which gives me both exposure to business problems as well as how to solve them with technology. So far, this has been a rigorous yet exciting course and has helped me build upon my technical and business acumen. Also, we've been lucky to have onboarded onto campus safely and have hybrid sessions to enrich our MBA experience. I hereby take this opportunity to introduce our esteemed panelists for the webinar. We are delighted to have with us Professor Rajesh Agarwal, who is the chairperson for one year MBA programs here at IIM Udaipur, Dr. Vai Shekhar, who is in charge for the Center for Digital Enterprise at IIM Udaipur, and uh, Ms. Padma Parth Sarthi, who is the senior vice president and global head for consulting and digital services at Tech Mahindra, as well as uh, an advisory board member for the DEM program. She is an uh, Indian Institute of Management Ahmedabad alumnus and has roles in consulting, technology, sales, key account management, and strategic initiatives, and has handled multiple PL management responsibilities during her career spanning more than 30 years. Padma Ma'am is also a part of the National Committee on Telecom and Broadband and of the Confederation of Indian Industry for 2021. And she also co-leads the subcommittee on digital stack and skills. In March 2020, she was featured on Forbes magazine's India Women Power list of self-made women. We are delighted to have you, ma'am. And without further ado, I would like to hand over to Padma ma'am to address the session. Thank you. So apologies are because I've been traveling. I didn't, don't have a formal um, presentation for this session. Um, so uh, I'm just going to be, you know, giving you my inputs for this session uh, right now. Uh, just one moment, please give me a one moment. Sure, ma'am. Yeah. Hi. I, are you able to hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah. So, um, so I'm actually doing a little bit of, uh, you know, of obviously what we are, what I have experienced when we bring in, um, you know, management trainees or senior management trainees, as we call them into the organization, as well as um, spoken to some of the people who actually have joined us in the last couple of years uh, to look at what they expected when they came into the organization and what they actually found. So some of them have said things like they expected um, a lot of structure and um, systems in place, et cetera, before they came. Uh, and they, what they found was that while there was a lot of learning for them, it wasn't in that structured fashion that they were expecting. And if I look at probably some of the reasons for that uh, happening in organizations today, and uh, Tech Mahindra is probably you know, representative of a number of other um, IT and other firms in the market today, um, there is what we call the VUCA word, right? So volatility, uncertainty, complexity, ambiguity, et cetera. And the VUCA world requires us to be able to respond um, very quickly sometimes and very differently perhaps from what we were doing in the past. Uh, and because of that, the demands that are made on people working in our organizations also is that they're able to actually adapt themselves to new things quickly. Uh, so whether it's learning new technology or learning new business models and ways of working, I mean, I think the last uh, one and a half years has taught us that it is, you know, we very quickly moved from all of us working, learning, et cetera, in uh, office locations to being able to do it virtually almost all of the time. So, so those are uh, obviously examples of where there is a very quick need for very quick adaptation that happens. Uh, and because of that, then, therefore, there is the expectation that management students like you who come into these organizations are also able to pick up um, and run with whatever initiative is given to them. So where in the past, they, 
probably would have been a much more structured training program and kind of progression of roles. Today, it's a lot more um, ambiguous in terms of what you might get and what you might have to. Uh, and there's a lot more need for being self-motivated, taking initiative on your own, rather than waiting for uh, instructions to be given to you. So that's the, I think, the first part. Now, what does that call for in terms of characteristics? It definitely calls for people who are willing to um, you know, spend the time and trouble that it takes to understand a situation. So I'll give you an example of what one of the, um, you know, one, uh, one of your colleagues from another management school actually went through in the last couple of years. Her, her first role when she came in was actually to handle or to manage alliances for one of our business units. And then in the last six months, she's been working with our CEO office, uh, working with the Mahindra University on strategy and marketing for the Mahindra University. So a very, very different role. Now there, if she waits and, uh, you know, waits for somebody to tell her what to do, she's not going to have much because, um, you know, it's not that there is a, a clearly defined path for that. So in that case, it is up to her to research what other universities are doing, where are they differentiating themselves, how are they marketing themselves, and then apply that. So, uh, and of course, there is a huge um, need to understand digital, digital technology, apply principles of analytics, uh, AI, et cetera, to what we're doing. But more than that, I think it is some of these softer skills that are extremely important. Um, and you, know, you folks are learning things like design thinking, et cetera. Applying those skills to these roles to become successful or to, to actually understand the needs of various stakeholders and align to them is extremely important. Uh, so I'm going to pause here. Um, I've been uh, pontificating for a while. So I'm going to just wait uh, to see what questions people have, and then we can probably take them and address those as we go along. I can see some have come up in the chat. Yeah, hi, Manika. You might go ahead, please. You can put only in chat section. Uh, could you please uh, put your question in the Q&A or the chat section, please? Uh, but my suggestion here, maybe we can take all the questions together. Uh, Certainly. Better for you to finish uh, your talk. Yeah. Yeah, no, I was just conscious of the time, Professor. So that's why I was, uh, uh, you know, uh, pausing now. And then, um, so I'm going to hand over to uh, Professor Agarwal so that he can then cover what he needs. Thank you. Mehma, could you please share the PPT, please? So thank you very much for uh, introducing the context of the uh, entire industry and how things operate in the modern world. As you rightly mentioned, the VUCA world, and I'm sure participants will have some question. So I would like to take uh, next uh, few minutes to talk about the program. Uh, you know, those of you who are desirous of applying in this program must have to have either a GMAT, GRE, or a CAT score and you must have at least 36 months of full-time work experience after your graduation. It's a full-time on-campus residential program. And once you successfully meet all the requirements, you get the MBA degree in digital enterprise management. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Yes, thank you. Uh, so I'm gonna briefly tell you what happens in this program. So as you start the program, we introduce you to the fundamentals of management, which will cover courses for all functional areas of management. Then we teach you how to apply the concepts that you have learned in the digital organization, basically focusing on emerging concepts, practices, and methods. And then we move on to the digital. When we say digital, we are talking about data and technology. So once we introduce data and technology, students start appreciating the roles and relevance of these in the digital world. 
and how technologies are involved in creating, managing, and analyzing data. Going forward, then you learn to apply what you've learned thus far in the specific industry verticals, such as FinTech, retail, uh, social sector, you know, manufacturing and the like. And towards the end of the course, through simulations and lab projects, you will be able to really assimilate, reflect, analyze, and comprehensively and holistically understand what is this digital world really means and what does it mean to apply what you've learned this far uh, in the real life practical situations. Going forward, so here I want to give you a very quick, uh, you know, rundown of the. So I'm not going to read out all of them, but I'm just going to tell you that fundamental in business management would have courses such as accounting, finance, economics, marketing, operations, and things of that kind. In in digital courses, you have design thinking, you know, multi-sided platform, agile, DevOps, you know, digital transformation, things of that kind, and then. Technology and data courses all about blockchain, IoT, artificial intelligence. And the industry vertical that I talked to you about is, you know, fintech, healthcare, social sector, B2B marketing. And the last segment is all about doing projects in the real world. So this is to give you a quick overview. If you have more uh, sort of you know, interested to know more about it, I would invite you to go to our website and have a look at the courses that, uh, that are there. Next slide. So uh, the Institute, places a great deal of importance to uh, this program. And as a result, and this business of digital, as a result, the Institute has set up a center for digital enterprise, which is headed by Dr. Shaker. So I now would request Dr. Shaker to talk to you more about the center and then you know take forward the presentation. So over to you, Dr. Shaker. Thank you, uh, Professor Rajesh. Uh, good evening, my panel members. And good evening to all the uh, participants in today's uh, webinar. Uh, it's my privilege and honor to speak to you all and uh, clarify our uh, concepts and thoughts that have gone in uh, to actually designing a content and a program that still stands very unique uh, in the Indian context. So to put together something like this, we uh, first needed the support of the industry. And that's where the Industry Academia uh, Alliance uh, got uh, created. We have more than uh, about uh, uh, a dozen and quarter, if I recall the number correctly, companies that have signed up with us to look at different aspects of digital. And digital is an emerging world as uh, uh, Padma uh, mentioned in her talk, you know, it's changing. It expects you to be responsive. It's about agile. It's about looking at new methods and to solve newer problems. So given the kind of complexity it has, it also gives us the opportunity to look at research in a new way. We look at creating new content and knowledge uh, through the interactions with industry. Uh, the students of DEM program are expected to do projects and these projects come to us from the industry. So they're actually solving real life problems in the uh, context of digital. And of course, uh, you know, the Industry Alliance is one of the strongest pillars for management education when it comes to campus placements. So we've kind of put this in place as one of the first steps in uh, uh, having uh, the program. And now we are uh, in a second year of uh, running the program. And uh, this is also, yeah, please go ahead. This is also structured through these women and men uh, of very high accomplishment. And uh, like I said, we are privileged today to have uh, Padma with us, who's on our advisory board uh, and brings in with her the kind of experience and uh, knowledge to not only look at uh, what needs to be done, but also to anticipate what uh, is going to emerge. And that is where we see a huge difference that this program gets as a benefit uh, from having these people on the panel. So if you see, it's a diverse set. We have people from the conventional business as well as the modern business, which is the platform uh, players uh, like the Quicker, InfoEdge and Flipkart. We also have academicians and the practitioners from technology, consulting and uh, consumer product industry. So it's a wide uh, spectrum that we've brought in together to look at uh, business in a holistic manner and digital as the driver of the new form of business. Uh, we can go on to the next slide. 
So what does all this mean in terms of uh, the current year's performance? Uh, you can definitely go to our website to, to look at uh, you know, what we have done so far. Uh, but the current batch, which is the second batch, uh, uh, almost 40% of the class is placed into companies that you see on the left-hand side uh, with a good average uh, uh, compensation that the students have received, uh, which kind of tells you, I mean, helps you compute your return on investment um, from the numbers that are there right now. It seems to be much lesser than a year, uh, but these are huge variables. So you must look at it in the context of how things would be a year down the line. Uh, I'm giving it back to Rajesh to conclude, uh, you know, why this program and uh, Rajesh, back to you. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Shekhar. So I think, uh, you know, we would like to mention that uh, if you are considering applying in this program, we believe that this is a unique program because not only you get to learn the fundamentals of business management, which is very essential for you to become an MBA, but also it dovetails it very well with the context of digital, which is the most you know, important emerging uh, business theme. It, you get an MBA degree from uh, the institution. Going forward, uh, Mahima, can you? All, yes. This program is very heavily industry-oriented in its design and also in its execution because several of our faculty members are industry practitioners. And a word about IIM Udaipur, that IIM Udaipur is among the new generation IIMs, but uh, very soon, uh, within the 10 years of its existence, it's earned a good reputation nationally and internationally. And I'm glad to mention that uh, we are ranked in QS World University ranking, uh, Financial Times ranking, and there are only three IIMs in the country which have consistently ranked in these three, these two I, you know, rankings, which is IIM Ahmedabad, the IIM Bangalore, and IIM, IIM Udaipur. So uh, that's very prestigious. And then we are also accredited by AACSB. Just to mention, only five percent of the global business schools are ranked uh, accredited by AACSB. So we are one among them, and we have ranked 18th by NIRF, Government of India. So I would say at the end, this thing that you must think through carefully and see if this program fits into your scheme of things, your aspiration, then you may like to seriously consider applying in this program. Now I would request you to put your questions in the Q&A section. And uh, I would uh, request Mahima to take over uh, the conduct of the rest of the session. Uh, Mahima, with your permission, as the questions come in uh, and the students take a note of our contact uh, details. Uh, mm -hmm. Padma, I would like to ask you a question on behalf of uh, the participants. Uh, Atli. Yeah. So typically as a uh, leader of digital in an organization that's global and has uh, multiple uh, uh, you know, uh, verticals or outreach, what is the kind of skill you expect management students to come uh, with? Uh, now, irrespective of you know, it being a tech organization or what it is, what are those core kind of skills you think are relevant in today's context? So, yes, sir, I think the excellent question. So uh, one is the ability to research because I think there's a need to kind of pull in the information from various kinds of sources in order to create proposition solutions from our customers that are relevant to them. Uh, so being able to understand um, from a, 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 you know, an organization, say PNL and operations data, linking that to what the CEOs, you know, other CXOs may be giving, uh, talking about in interviews, and then linking that to what uh, other players in the industry are doing. I think that ability to be able to stitch all of that together is extremely important. And typically that is where we see new entrants into the, uh, from management schools into the consulting team starting to move. For people with experience, obviously then we expect them to take that into uh, creating propositions for customers, looking at what kind of digital interventions could help address the customer's priorities or um, you know, the, the key problems that they're tackling at that point. Um, so it could be in terms of you know, helping them to grow. It could be in terms of helping them reach better benchmarks with respect to their peers. 
um, or it could be where you know they're looking at a, a very very different business line for uh, you know to, to enter, for instance. Uh, uh, so, if I were to paraphrase it uh, in terms of uh, you know how uh, an aspirant would look at it, you would look at people being self starters, having the ability to connect the dots across uh, functions. You know what you mentioned. You know how the leaders would speak. So it's not that I'm a techie and I would like to be in the technology uh, role, uh, but uh, what happens is that you have to use technology to connect, whether it's a finance role, an operations role, an HR role, a customer facing role, those kind of things. And uh, I think you said with the management uh, background and work experience, you should be able to articulate a value proposition to business uh, customers uh, or to solve a problem uh, that exists out there, uh, be it for social purpose or for commercial gains. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. The other is, of course, where we're doing work internally for Tech Mahindra, where you know I talked about the the, the, current, the management trainee who's currently working with, say, Mahindra University. So this could be where we are trying to create a business plan for a new area, or we're trying to upscale an existing business. So, for instance, last year. Uh, we had cloud, um, you know, the cloud business as an area of focus. Now, cloud business was being done in pockets within the organization. So there was obviously the infrastructure and cloud. It looked at uh, taking clients to the cloud. We also had uh, teams like in my team that was doing cloud strategy and advisory services. Uh, we had another team that was looking at data and data on the cloud, et cetera, or SAP on the cloud. And the idea was, how do you bring all of this together and look at a holistic kind of business on cloud and look at scaling that? Because then once you bring it all together and talk of that comprehensive capability, then the ability uh, to win new business gets much, much larger. And secondly, therefore, we can um, uh, you know, scale the business significantly. Uh, so that's really uh, one, one. So, so for those kind of things, again, we would expect uh, you know, graduates of this kind to come in and work on a strategy like that, to look at where are the gaps in what we're doing today? How do we fill those? And how do we effectively bring all, together all the things that we already have? Right. Um, my only concern uh, was that, you know, you spoke so much about cloud. I thought Mahima will take over with all her experience in that and give us one <laughs> good yarn session over it. Mahima, over to you. I see some questions already there in the Q&A. Okay. Sure. Thank you so much, Padma, ma'am, for taking the time. Really insightful. And uh, just to add on to uh, your uh, thoughts, uh, I think the program has a very good mix of us doing business cases along with technology and really connecting the dots. So uh, definitely has a lot of subjects related to cloud as well as product management and design thinking to think about problems in a really different way. Uh, moving on to the Q&A, uh, I would like to take the first question. Um, it's from uh, Vivek Kumar and he asks, uh, what is the CAT cutoff for this program? So let me take that. Uh, uh, Vivek, uh, we do not have any specific cut off either for CAT or GMAT or GRE. While we evaluate the, you know, the application of a candidate, we look at the application in its totality. We look at the score, the, your experience, your academic background, the conversations that you have in the personal interview, and they, then the admission committee takes a decision. So we do not have a specific cutoff for any of these exams that I can you know, mention to you. Uh, we hope that answers. Uh, moving on to the next question, uh, Aditya is asking, uh, would this be more of a technical program uh, than a business program? Shekhar, would you take that? Y yes, I would. I think that's exactly what Padma uh, mentioned a while ago, that the emerging roles are a combination of technology and business. So the course exposes you to some of these technologies, but expects you to work in the area of business. So it is not making you a specialist in technology, but it's trying to make you a better manager and a better leader uh, in the context of business. Sure. Um, moving on to the next question. Um, I wanted, uh, it's by Akshay Ram. Um, 
he says that I wanted to make a switch to a product management role. Can I use the DEM program as a bridge to it? I have a work experience of four years, both in product and service-based companies. Shikhar, you'll take that. Yes, or I would. Uh, Padma, your views on this uh, before I answer. Uh, by and large, how does the industry look at it? Um, so, I mean, I think not so much for the PM role, but I think the ability to manage teams, yes, I, I'm assuming is something that is taught here. But more importantly, actually, as you get into things like the, the product management roles, the agile world, et cetera, uh, it's the ability to do things like that rather than just a pro project management role, which you can probably do in your existing organization with a little bit of training. This is probably going to give you much more than just the switch to a project management. Sure. Uh, we have a question uh, for especially Padma ma'am now. Uh, um, how did you move from being a digital industry expert to being a contributor to government and public policy uh, and government is advisory boards? Okay. I don't think I followed any conscious uh, path to do that. Um, uh, so yes, so um, uh, most of our organizations, whether it's Tech Mahindra or TCS or Infosys or Wipro or, or any of the IT uh, specialist organizations, typically they get asked to participate in some of these industry bodies. Um, so CII, for instance, has multiple actually initiatives happening in the digital and the telecom space. So telecom is viewed as a, a means to getting the whole, uh, whole country uh, much more digital. So that is how I was asked to be a part of that. So, you know, my company nominated me to be part of that, uh, uh, you know, the, the uh, committee uh, because, you know, we were asked as Tech Mahindra to participate in that. Sure, thank you, ma'am. Uh, moving on to the next question. Uh, how is the course different from any general management courses in the country? Apart from the data front, is there any specific difference? Let me take that, uh, begin with, and then I'll help take uh, Dr. Shaker's help if needed. So as I mentioned that because this course is, you know, an M gives you an MBA degree, you certainly have to learn all the core management fundamentals. And that's what happens as you arrive on the campus for the first term, which is almost like a six months of your program. And then comes your context. The context is the application of the management fundamentals in the digital world. And we talked about while explaining the program content, you saw in detail as to how all these management concepts are applied in the digital world. And then you get an opportunity to apply them in an industry vertical. And then through the projects, it helps you bring in your all the learning into the dirting your hands and actually applying them and see how it really works with the help of an industry project. So we have tried to design the course with several, you know, uh, inputs from the, you know, industry advisory board who are leaders in this field to see that this, this combination of management and the digital makes uh, sense in a manner that it is useful, not only for your own learning, but also to the industry, their ability to go and perform in the industry right away after the program should be very high. That's what we believe. Uh, if, yeah. I may add, if I may so, add, absolutely. I think Professor Agrawal uh, completely nailed that. So when we, when we get, uh, so in the past, when we would get management trainees or, uh, or what we call the global leadership card, uh, you know, teams coming in, we would spend a lot of time training them on some of these things and then asking them to take certifications in these areas, et cetera. Because all of these digital technology areas and digital transformation areas are kind of core to our business. So this course is giving you all of that apart from the, the business management um, you know, fundamentals that are part of the course. Thank you, Professor Rajesh and uh, uh, Padma ma'am. Uh, there is another question. Uh, I was offered admission to the DEM program last year, but could not join. Uh, could I uh, again reapply for the upcoming batch? Absolutely. <laughs> if you're offered admission, uh, you're very welcome. Irrespective of the fact whether you were offered admission last year or not, you're very welcome to apply this year. Sure. Uh, 
Uh, moving on, uh, do 10th and 12th marks play a key role in admission? Uh, I think as I answered a little while ago, um, you know, I think I would request all of you to think it like this. If you think that you are interested in an MBA as a career and digital is something that excites you, then this is the program for you. Do not overly worry about the role of, you know, a specific mark here and there. As I said, the decision to offer an admission or not depends on whole host of factors. So if I were an applicant, I will not overly worry about even any one thing. You should think about whether this program is of you know, interest to you, whether it aligns with your career goals. If it does, then you must you know, go ahead and apply rather than worrying about each of these components. Uh, we hope that answers. Um, the standard profile being the one which meets minimum criteria, what is an ideal profile to get an admission into this program? I think it's on the same lines, but uh, yes. in case. No, no, I'd like to say the same thing. There is sure. <clears throat> each candidate is unique in some sense, right? And they bring in their qualities in a manner that we don't have to worry about what the other person brings. So as I said, if you think you like MBA as a career, you think digital is exciting, then go ahead and apply. Um, moving on, uh, how much value will this program add to someone who is having around eight years of experience in IT software development? Uh, what type of roles can one expect after pursuing the one-year DEM MBA? And what type of companies can one opt for? There are a couple of other queries from the same person, but we'll take it one by one. Okay, let me uh, take this uh, uh... Our sweet spot, which is with a limited set of data uh, that we have of student profile and uh, what the industry advises us, is a three to eight year experience. Now, what happens beyond that is uh, organizations believe that uh, people taking up uh, uh, MBA courses uh, after a particular period of time in their career is to upgrade themselves within the same organization rather than to switch over. So they don't become very exciting for uh, new companies to look at profiles that are uh, deep in their experience. So our advice has always been that if you are in that spot of three to eight years, there is a good opportunity that the companies coming to the Institute will find your profile attractive. Now we, in the presentation showed you some of those companies that have come. Uh, it's typically the management consulting companies, the SI companies that currently are working on digital transformation or in customer engagement activities uh, uh, that helps them uh, uh, leverage the power of digital technologies. These are the kinds of roles that are coming up. The designations are changing year on year. So we are very not, we are not quite sure how things will be next year, but there are some interesting uh, roles in the area of customer experience management or customer uh, experience or journeys, those kind of things coming up, which are cross-functional. So those are the kinds of opportunities that are coming up for uh, uh, the uh, students graduating from this program. Thank you, sir. Uh, moving on to the next, will three and a half years of HR work experience be a hindrance to applying uh, to the MBA DEM program? It's not a hindrance at all. As long as you have three years plus uh, of work experience, you're eligible to apply. More importantly, are you in a position to think about your own career beyond the role of an HR? then this uh, program becomes even more relevant. Um, does five plus years of experience have any disadvantage in terms of admission? No, it doesn't. Sure. Um, another question is, um, how much assistance would we get for placement? Uh, Mahima, I think you can answer that. Since you are from yeah. the batch, you can straight away talk about it. <laughs> Uh, sure, I'll take that up. So uh, we do have a placement cell, uh, which gives complete assistance to us for placements if we opt in for it. Um, apart from that, a very special feature, which I thought really helped me 
uh, get prepared for placements is a preparation committee as well, um, which takes care of uh, preparing us for the placements and uh, basically developing our overall personality as, as a whole. So I think very probably none of the institutions does that. So the support we get here in terms of uh, placement is, is really uh, great. I mean, I would say. So um, moving on to the next question, uh, what's the batch size for the coming academic year? And do we have any existing uh, memorandum of understanding with any companies or exchange programs? Okay, let me answer that. Uh, uh, we don't have a fixed number on the batch size. Uh, this program will run even with a very small cohort, uh, as long as we know that the students uh, uh, who get into this program are interested and committed. Uh, so we are not driven by a capacity to fill. Uh, the other part of the question was, do we have an exchange program? The answer is no. So this is a program by itself, and uh, the degree that is given is given to you by IIM Udaipur. Sure. Uh, it also had a clause about, do we have any existing MOUs with any companies? Yes, that is for exchange, right? No. So this is not something where uh, you continue to work and then do this particular program. This program expects you to disengage all your engagements, uh, commercial or uh, otherwise and focus on this particular program and you go back. So if there is a sabbatical, that's between the individual and that company that uh, the individual served, the Institute has no role. Sure. Uh, moving on to the next question. Uh, I would be completing three years of work experience in a product-based company coming February end. Would my profile be considered for selection or is MBA DEM 23 a better choice? Anu could answer that. Tanu? Hello. Yes. Over to you, Tanu, ma'am. Can you answer that? Yes, as you having three years of, uh, means if you complete your three years of work experience uh, by February 2022, so yes, you are eligible to apply for uh, the program. For the because as per the, yeah, as per our admission criteria, we require three uh, years of complete work experience after graduation till February 2022, a minimum uh, requirement of experience. Great. We have a question from Bhavna. Uh, I have three years of experience in internal audit. Will my profile be considered? Uh, Bhavna, we, uh, we encourage you that you should write to program office with all your documents. Uh, means we need to check like what kind of experience you have first before uh, processing the application. Uh, so uh, what we are trying to say is, was this internal audit part of uh, uh, an article ship or this was a full-time role? Am I right, Tanu? That's what yeah, we- so, so sir, if, if it is an article ship, it will not be considered as a full-time work experience. Yes. Bhavna, I hope that answers or you can write to us and uh, we'll uh, try to answer it best as possible. Um, so she's written full-time role. So it's three years of work experience, then you stand uh, eligible to apply for this program. Yes. Sure. Uh, we have a question from Manikant. Um, he says that as a data scientist, my years of experience is nine years and uh, salary I think uh, is 30 plus LPA. Post MBA does play placement services help me to get a better compensation and uh, am I eligible for placements? Okay. Uh, uh, let me answer that. Um, uh, Manikan, more philosophical than practical. Uh, look at this course from a long-term perspective and not for the first job that you get after doing this course. So there are chances uh, you may get a compensation of the kind you're expecting or you may not, okay? Because compensation is a factor of time prevalent at the point of interview. You, one can't predict what it's going to be. But if that is your primary motive, then I would suggest that you are in a safer place right now than what it would be a year down the line. But if you're looking at things in a long, longer term perspective and with a broader area of uh, functioning, then this course becomes relevant. Uh, 
So my uh, request to you is to look at what things you can do by getting a degree in uh, digital management, what kind of openings you can get uh, being more important than what is the compensation that you'll get with the first opportunity that comes your way uh, in the campus placement. And I think, like you said, uh, Professor Shekhar, the, the longer term career prospects as well post this. Um, we have a question from Vivek. Uh, does recommendation, uh, is recommendation necessary for admission process? For this ask. year, um, for this year, we are not asking for any recommendation. That's not required for that as a part of application. All right. Um, another question is, uh, how relevant is this course for someone who aspires to work outside India, like Europe, or USA, and Canada? And what's the expected batch size? I think we've covered the batch size. Um, you take the relevance of this course for international aspirations. Uh, so this is a program that gives you an MBA degree. And like any other MBA degree, this is valid uh, uh, by itself. So whatever are the opportunities that uh, an MBA gets overseas is what one can look at through this particular program. So this by itself does not give you any new privileges uh, or uh, you know, uh, bar you from doing certain things that an MBA, a two-year MBA program would let you do. Uh, we have another question. How are digital enterprises different from traditional ones? We have answered that uh, before. Sure. That traditional one means a general MBA, and this is a MBA focused on digital context. So we've answered that. If the question is about the companies themselves and the you know the uh, yeah. digital organizations versus traditional organizations, yeah, uh, I can probably uh, answer one. that. So sure. we typically try and model, um, you know, how digital impacts uh, organizations and industries on a few levels. So the first is how do their products and services change as a result of digital? Uh, so for instance, um, you know, if you look at um, you know, organizations that are providing um, you know, car as a service to you, for instance, so you don't buy the car, but did you can actually lease it or rent or even organizations that provide bicycles and um, three wheelers or two wheelers and things like that. So basically it's allowing you to own that vehicle for a short period of time when you're using it and then return it, right? So that's a change that is enabled through the use of digital technology. Uh, the second could be in terms of business models, the way you access customers, the way you run your operations, the way your supply chain is run, all of that can be transformed through digital. Uh, and if you look at the Uberization, place or you know the airbnb models kind of where you don't own assets the way you access your customers is very different from the traditional ways of accessing customers you do it through uh, digital technology so that's one other and then if you uh, even if you don't take it at the level of say uh, products and services and business models etc but you take it in just looking at front to back processes in an organization how do you make them more efficient more customer friendly how do you enable um, you know, a lot more growth, et cetera. That's where, again, digital technology can play a role. Uh, and I think the classic example, um, and, you know, which was reducing risk actually was during COVID. A number of hospitals moved from providing uh, physical consultation to online consultation. So you took a, a process that was running in a particular way, you put in digital technology to enable that to run in a much more risk-free uh, way during COVID. Thank you so much. I, my apologies, I missed. I thought the question is more to do with digital MBAs compared to the traditional MBA. The question was of an enterprise. So thank you very much, Padma ma'am, for stepping in and answering that question. Thank you very much. So we uh, seem to have answered all the questions, Maima. Yes, for well, now we have, uh, seem to have answered all the questions. I request the participants if they have any other questions to key it in uh, in another two to three minutes. Otherwise, we can close uh, start closing the session. Um, okay, we have one question. We ha uh, my latest GRE score is from the year twenty seventeen. Am I still allowed to apply? Maybe Tanu ma'am, you can take it up, please. Uh, yeah, uh, as you uh, given GRE in 2017, so the general validity of a GRE score is five years. 
So yes, you are eligible to apply with the score. Can anyone apply in all rounds of cycles? Can, can one person apply in all the rounds? Uh, all the rounds, it depends. Like, uh, means because uh, if he apply in cycle one and if he not, uh, if he've been interviewed and not offered, then I suggest that there is no use of applying in the respective cycle, subsequent cycle. But if he is out in this uh, means initial screening, so maybe he can uh, upgrade his profile and again apply in cycle second. That is fine. Sure. Uh, yeah. So Tanu, uh, let me just uh, put it in this perspective that uh, uh, in a given year, it's your best attempt is in one cycle for you to apply, get yourself shortlisted, interviewed, and get the offer. Uh, if you miss the offer uh, during the interview cycle, it's better for you to apply the following year. But if you didn't get a shortlist because of certain uh, things that were not there in your profile, and you feel that you can upgrade your profile uh, with certain other information, it may be worthwhile for you to make another attempt in that same year. Thank you, sir. Um, another question we have is what type of accommodation is provided for the course? So Should we I... have facilities on campus. Everybody is provided single room accommodation. Uh, yeah. And it's air conditioned. <laughs> Uh, in winters, I wonder uh, if you want that. It's a long way from what we had. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Probably one of the best accommodations. I would vouch for that. Uh, do we have any other questions? Okay. Uh, do companies have age restrictions during placements? So uh, technically, they don't come as age restrictions, but they kind of nudge in terms of experience. So that is how it comes in. So there is no clear uh, indication that you know people below a particular age can apply. Most companies look at it in terms of saying above a particular uh, number of uh, years of experience, they would not want to interview the candidates. That's how they uh, present their case. Uh, any closing questions, uh, participants? There is one which says uh, only GMAT, GRE, and CAT scores are applicable. Yeah, and the answer is yes, one of them. Yeah. All right. So I think uh, it's time to close. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity to thank uh, all the attendees uh, to join this webinar and uh, you know get your doubts cleared. And I would encourage you to apply for this program if you think your career goals align with that of the program and it's in your best interest to apply for this program, then you must consider applying in this program. Also take this opportunity to thank uh, Ms. Padma Parsarthi. It was wonderful that she could spare so much time for uh, all of us today and talk to you about uh, what does it mean for a graduate of this program to get into the industry and what does what kind of opportunities does the digital offer for uh, for all of you and uh, thank you dr shaker as well and thank you mahima for hosting this uh, webinar so ably thank you so much Pleasure, sir uh, thank you all the panelists and once again padma ma'am for your uh, valuable time and addressing the uh, aspirants it would it means a lot to us even to interact with you and for the participants as well and thank you, Shekhar, sir, uh, for attending and uh, Rajesh, sir, for addressing all the queries and introducing the program. I hope we have answered most of your queries, uh, attendees. Thank you so much uh, for joining the session. And uh, we wish you all the very, very best for, uh, for the application process as well as the admissions. And I would uh, hope to interact with some of you, probably as an alum, <laughs> soon sometime. So thank you so much and all the very best. Uh, thank you, everyone. Good day. My pleasure Good day. and thank you. I think this is a, a very interesting session. Thank you. Thank you.